thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, building a digital platform with Ember.js. My name is Dries. I'm a front-end developer at Ocular for seven years now, and I've been using uh, Ember for five years. So what Ember gets name is digital, and what do we do at Ocular? Uh, before I give you the answer, uh, let's start with a question for you. Uh, who here has ever been to a museum? Who here has ever used a, an app or a touchscreen at a museum? Okay, nice, nice. So at Ocular, we built interactive and audiovisual installations for museums, showrooms, and experience centers. This can be informational apps in a museum, uh, storytelling through an uh, experience center, digital kiosks, or uh, a lot of IoT devices. Uh, digital is blending uh, physical and digital to bring your story and audience closer together. It's a combination of interactivity, technology, and storytelling. And um, you can provide a unique interactive experience for your audience. Uh, we have projects in Belgium, like uh, in Flanders Field Museum, about uh, World War I. Here you see an example of an IoT device, an RFID bracelet. And this allows the visitor to see all the information throughout the museum in their own language and based on their age. On the right, uh, an audiovisual installation with projection mapping and uh, sound about the evolving battlefield uh, around the city of Ypres. We have projects like the Ghent University Museum, which was honored uh, at the European Museum Awards of this year. There are over 50 interactive applications there. And if you like science and strange objects, I truly recommend a visit. Now, this is a great example of combining hardware and software. What you see is a screen mounted to a wall uh, with a historical timeline of a building in the background. And you can slide the screen left and right alongside this timeline and interact with it. Um, and you can see all information about the building uh, through history. I have a small uh, demo. So the, the application maps uh, on the background and uh, you can touch uh, the screen and see information about uh, this building. Uh, here in Paris, uh, we're working on an experience center for a big payment service company. And what you see here in the image is an 8K touch wall, uh, which runs our Amber uh, app, uh, Experify. And this is where our platform comes in. Um, with Experify, it is possible to dynamically change the digital environment to the needs of the visitor. For example, in a showroom, in the morning, you can show content for uh, client X, and in the afternoon, uh, content for client uh, Y. So it's a content management system, a device management system for controlling screens and working with IoT devices and a visitor management uh, system to keep track of your visitors and what they focus on. An example of what a client can create is an interactive map. I've made one uh, for Emberfest. So this is basically a map with uh, points of interest on it and interacting with one uh, shows you information, text and videos, and uh, yeah, that's it. So here I made one with, um, about Emberfest, and the other little baguettes are just points of interest about uh, the city. So this is an application for, your, uh, for touch. Um, so you drag and drop the elements. Now, to build this platform, we were looking for the technology to build it with, and we decided to go with Ember. We wanted to have a clear structure on how to do things, like convention over configuration, routing, components. Um, the reactivity system is pretty good, performance, and we wanted to have a, a long-term uh, product development. When we were working with Ember, we noticed some positive things. 
we could just be productive. Uh, it has useful features, auto discovery for components, hooks, uh, and so on. It has an easy upgrade process and stable releases and a welcoming and supportive community. You guys. <laughs> Uh, the Discord uh, server is uh, very valuable as well. Uh, if you have yeah, a problem, there are a lot of experts there that, uh, that, that help you. So that's pretty good. And we could just do our thing with it. And uh, we did some uh, examples. Uh, we made countless informational apps in many countries like uh, France, Germany, Poland and Italy games and educational apps for for children and what you see here is our object recognition setup so you place a, a disc on a touch screen and it detects uh, information what it needs to show uh, you can move the disc uh, along the screen and uh, the arcs around it move with it um, and on the right uh, the client wanted to actually put tasting samples of chocolate on top of it so they uh, had an interactive and yeah, tasteful experience for their clients. From the start of our uh, development, we, deci we decided to create a library. In this case, that's an Ember add-on to put all our components, uh, our helpers, our tests uh, in it. And this library is then important, imported in to our Xperify app. And if we needed to build something completely different for a client without adding it to our uh, product, we could still use our core uh, with our components. So it gave us more flexibility to create other apps. Uh, often our uh, installations need to run offline. It could be that there is uh, no stable connection, there's no connection at all, or the connection has been lost. So our apps need to keep running uh, with or without internet. And uh, this is why we have some uh, mechanics in place uh, to handle this. Like usually when you, um, on a website, when you perform an API call uh, when entering a route, well, for us, that won't work. Uh, in our app, when it boots, um, we trigger a cascade of API calls with all necessary data in it, and then we store it uh, in our local storage. So with the help of uh, the local forage adapter, uh, we store all this textual data, so it's only textual, uh, in our local storage, and then we can use uh, like this pin get store to, to get all uh, of our data. And what about images, videos, and other files? Uh, when our code is built uh, with our pipeline, we encapsulate it in an Electron app. That way, it's easy to install on the device and also to update it uh, later on. And with the use of uh, Node.js, we download uh, assets to device, like an 8K video. Yeah, you can't stream that easily, so we put it on a device. And that way, uh, every app can run offline. So at Ocular, uh, we love combining hardware and software. So it's fun when we can make use of IoT devices, uh, like sensors and other technologies. To make good use of this, uh, we created several uh, services, like the crossbar, crossbar service. Uh, and this technology, um, it's used for messaging and sending commands to our devices, so we can change content on the fly. With a push on the button, they can change their uh, content. We can reboot them, refresh them, and so on. There's a lot of uh, sensors, like the RFID you saw earlier, the bracelet. Um, the wire draw sensor, that's the sensor we use for the, the mounted uh, video screen on the wall. And yeah, rotation, weather, and so on. And another service we created for is uh, Tuyo for multi-touch and our object recognition. And then accessibility is uh, pretty important for museums, and it's not always e not 
always easy to do it. Uh, we try our best to make a visit to a museum as accessible as possible. And since our apps are web-based, we can provide them uh, for the visitor online if, if needed. And some other examples of what we did is the, the mounted application uh, from, from at the beginning of the presentation. There's a button uh, at the bottom where you can lower the screen, the contents of the screen for uh, wheelchair users. Um, yeah. It is also possible in our system to add uh, videos with uh, sign language or um, uh, captions. That's all possible uh, with, with it. And uh, several apps have also a high contrast uh, mode or a large font size mode. And then uh, COVID hit two years ago. Museums and showrooms uh, were closed, so that's not good. Our core business uh, was gone. So, uh, <laughs> so we, came, uh, we came up with something new, and that's virtual showrooms. So what if we bring uh, the physical showroom uh, through the web? So that is uh, the virtual showroom. You can preview uh, at the bottom. Uh, you can use existing content in both physical and virtual showrooms. Uh, hosts can take visitors on a journey, and um, there's also video calls. Uh, the technology we use for that is Twilio. It's one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations, group calls, text chat, uh, yeah, virtual showrooms. A little preview. So as you can see, the interactive map we saw earlier can easily be, be, be implemented in a virtual showroom. And this is a way to use existing content from a physical showroom. So when each wall you see in the 3D space can also be a physical device in your showroom. So I created uh, like a basic one about Emberfest. So after we created this new uh, Ember app, we could easily import our existing components from our core and the interactive map you saw earlier as a good example of that. Also, uh, when we needed to fix a bug or add a new feature, we could just do it in one place and it's updated uh, in both applications. Like if you're interested in how we made the 3D view of the box, this is how we did it. Just uh, a perspective on the container and back face visibility uh, on each uh, wall. And then uh, just a simple transform to let them stand up straight <laughs> uh, in 3D space. And then at Ocular, we like to combine, as you know, hardware and software. So a client of ours, uh, Nipro, asked us to create a physical version of the virtual showroom. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so you can actually rotate it and the screens, the three screens uh, rotate with it. So uh, that's that. <laughs> so uh, the key takeaways here are uh, Ember's technology can be widely used for things other than websites. Combining hard and software is a great way to bring people uh, together. Uh, reach out if you have any questions afterwards. Thank you all for your attention.